was younger I was all skinhead and punk and when graffiti came to here it was just like all of a sudden before everything was black and white and then when graffiti arrived everything was more coloured it was, it was like a much more colourful interesting world that's kind of what attracted me to it. It was a bit, I suppose, a rebellious thing, you know, just, just going out and, and painting illegally, um, you know, because there was nothing like this. There was no legal walls or anything like that. You just had to go out and do, find a place to paint and, and do it. Sometimes for me, like I, I still like find an abandoned place and paint in there, but if it's, if it's an interesting place, then that will maybe drive what, I, what I'm going to paint. Uh, I'm quite led by, so, sometimes I'll do something that's quite graphic and, and things like that. Other times I'll do things that are quite sort of like all of the shop, quite abstracted. Uh, and a lot of it, it kind of, well, the, the process of where I come from is, is different for each one. I'm not, I'm not like a, a lot of people who have the same sort of style that they do all the time. I'm, I'm kind of not like that um, because my my influences are, are different as well. Like graffiti made me an artist, but uh, through through starting to do graffiti, I, I studied illustration, I studied design, uh, I studied photography. I learned a lot of different skills. Uh, like I learned how to take photos from taking photos in really dodgy. Uh, really dark places, it, it, so it, it made me become a good photographer because I had to work to become to, to protect photos of the, the work I created. So to say how how you start a design, sometimes it's just I just look at a blank wall and I can come up with a design in your head. Kind of one of these people, it, it's constantly coming out of my head. You know, if you give me a piece of paper, I'll just sit and doodle for ages and, and just come out from that. Sometimes I've got a really clear idea, sometimes I've no idea when I start. Most people would however start with a, a sketch so it's usually based around your name so whatever whatever tag you've got and the design comes around that. A lot of people you have a set of rules that they'll, they'll work to so the letters might be um, symmetrical, they'll balance on both sides. Um, so usually you start off with your sketch, so you, you rough your sketch, um, then you go to the wall, start working on it like that. Some people just paint straight on the wall, so it's, it's different for everybody. There's a clear difference between what people consider street art and what people consider graffiti. The people just generally dismiss out of hand, like when we, when we organised this big, big ball along here, it's uh, the, biggest, the biggest in the UK, um, everybody was outraged for, uh, the, the, because people's perception of, of this is just a tag, you know, uh, a thing like that. Uh, it was quite funny when we did, when we did that. Uh, wall. There was a woman came along afterwards. We got 100 artists out to paint it, and painted it. And she came along to take photos before all the taggers turned up to wreck it. I don't know me, because she'd heard, she'd read on the internet that there was going to be hundreds of people coming down to deface the wall. And I don't know these are the people you actually you read about. They're the, they're the ones. So she came down to take photos because she thought it was going to get defaced by all these tags. And I don't know what we were talking about is these. Now, obviously, people don't like tags, but without a tag, you don't have what you have now. All of that came from a tag, it came from some kids scrolling their name. That's the, the core of, of all of that comes from that. So you can't have graffiti and all the beautiful paintings if you didn't have tags to begin with. So it's, it's still kind of part of it. It's, it's still it's the way people sort of like identify that they're there.